If you had a time machine and you could go to, to any place in history, where would, where's the first place you would go? Yeah, I would go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane. It's the public park where Jesus was arrested. You are obsessed with this. <laughs> yeah, I think you I... You constantly it, talk yeah. about this this yeah. moment when Jesus was arrested. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's why is that... Is this in the Bible? Yes, it is. Also, dumb question. How yeah. many versions of the modern Bible are there? Um, I don't know how many, but there's... I can think of at least 12. There. And what's the difference between them all? Why? Why is there through either so many versions? It depends on the time that they're translated. And if you'll notice, a lot of them will follow the earlier authors. Right? Bible scholars don't read anything outside of the Bible. So how good do you think their vocab is? How right. good do you think their translation skills are? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the problem. So those translations are generally pretty bad. And that's what I brought some ex examples of. Okay. And this is in the garden, actually, that I brought these these slides for. Um, okay. And this is the Garden of Gethsemane. And where are we? We're with Jesus in the first. And he's being arrested. Okay. So let's give some context. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give some context. To this. So, so, so who was Jesus and why and... What is so good? What is so great about him? Yeah, Jesus is a guy who walked around with twelve children, and um, all the time, and prophets, and a group of prophets. No, I'm just telling you what the text says. He was just a guy who walked around with prophets, he prophets and children. So, he, what was so great about? He called his disciples, and he calls them his children constantly. Right? Remember, remember. God. So he's a pimp. God blesses those who take care of the children. Right? Okay. Yeah. He takes care of these children. He takes care of these children. Okay. There is a female underage called the Paidiska. When Jesus Christ is in his trial, his followers won't admit they're his followers. Right? It's the whole, you're going to deny me, right? And Jesus is all like, I'm going to get friggin' scandalized, right? And you're going to deny me when he's in the garden and he gets caught. Mm -hmm. And those three, Peter, James, and John, they're keeping watch, the text says. They're guarding at a distance while Jesus takes the wicked boy that's been assigned to him. That's what the text says. Like a slave. So... This, the depiction of this event is only in one version of the Bible. Is that right? Is it uh, Matthew? No, it's in multiple, but the kid is only in Mark. Only in Mark. Yeah. Okay. And it's only like yeah. two sentences, and, right? Stephen, can you and, pull up? Can you pull up the passage? It's. I've uh, got it here. Oh, you've got it there. Okay. Yeah. 1451. Is that first slide? I can pull up the passages and show different the the different versions yeah, and let's how do it that. translates as well. Uh, what passage is it? Mark 1451. 1451. All right, cool. Okay, a young man. Uh, what is it? Can you blow it up? Yeah. yeah. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. That's all it says. Yeah. Now look at the Greek. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And it says a young boy was assigned to him having wrapped his penis with a medicated bandage and they arrested him a medicated bandage is what it Seen says on yeah i've got the okay so i'm i'm comparing the, yours to what this one says so visibility i can turn on greek as well okay. i'd love to see how the uh, this online bible <laughs> matches uh yours check out the is is okay so right here is that exactly what you're reading yeah that's what i'm reading okay which which one of those greek words is uh wrapped in a medicated linen. Epigumnu. This is on the... Okay, let's just start on the first line. Maybe yeah. we should... Should we go to his computer, Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm punching that's, it up. That's it. Okay, okay. The first... Let's go to the first one. The second word in is neoniskos, and that is what we call a diminutive. Neoniskos. So it's a little of something else. And what is a neoneus? A neoneus is a boy. Okay. Yeah. So this is a little boy. Okay. And they called Paidiska, female 
students who were underage. Okay. And when I say underage, I don't mean Did un- they define under underage 18. down back then? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not under 18. It's before So, okay. Right. So that was their word for, for before Age was They didn't set a year. Right. Okay. Got it. Right. The translation here says young. And was there, (laughs) was was there uh, any sort of moral boundaries when it came to sex or prostitution based on the pre- Not from what I've seen. Okay. Yeah. Now, generally. Nothing. In different, no. In different civilizations, you can still, like in Athens, you can still prosecute for somebody coercing what you and I would say is underage, them before puberty. Yeah, that's still, you can get in trouble for that. Okay. But it's not like it, um, it's not like there's compensation involved because, you know, it's not like a crime like you and I consider a crime. It's more like a civil crime. Yeah. Okay. It, like being punched. Right. Yeah. You've damaged somebody so you can give them reparations for damaging oh, them. Okay. That's what you do. But the pedagogy... In antiquity, pedagogue, that person who raises, educates the children, right? That person, that's the kentauron, they call them. The centaur. It's their word for past. Which means what? Oh, um, uh, with children. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and Chiron, remember Chiron, he's a centaur who is the master of Heracles. And now you know why Heracles has his boy Hylas. Do you understand? The sacred mysteries pass from generation to generation. Okay. Yeah. So, again, what was so special about Jesus? He was a guy who walked around with kids yeah apostles apostles yeah so um what was so special about him? was what, he the only one doing that what was so sp- no what's so what was so special about him? like oh and this is that's perfect um no he's not it's called being a lay stace what is a lay stace he and he was crucified between two of these a lay stace is defined and i've got it on the next let's see oh here look this follows my presentation so this is what the boy that was with Jesus, the boy, this is what he was with him, um, doing him. He's, he's following him. Notice they use this ter- term, sunakuletho. And right? where, Kolutha, oh, where do you me. get this from, this, this oh, image? This is the thank you to the Victorians from Oxford who have given us this wonderful, fantastic lexicon of ancient Greek. Okay. Uh, 1850s. Okay. A- after that book that you just had was... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Was written. Okay. Um, and here it is. And it's notice that um, it's using soldiers. It's using term for soldiers and slaves, right? So um, this kid is not just hanging out with Jesus, right? We've, people have tried to explain this um, for a while. What was this kid doing with Jesus, right? Okay. Um, anyway, let's go on to the next one. Double click. There you go. Now hit yeah, the green blow button. It up. Look, this is what the kid is wrapped on his gumnos. And you say, what's gumnos? Uh, gumnos Fine is, cloth, usually linen. Yeah. Yeah. Fine cloth. Look. Look, look, look. Where it's, look at the second line. It says, busines telamones. Right? Uh-huh. So they're wrapping things in this Used fine for mummies. cloth. Right? And surgeons' bandages. Mm-hmm. And bandages, and that's where I get it. On my end, when I'm reading the medical authors, they're all saying that you impregnate linen with drugs that you're going to treat the wound with, right? This kind of makes sense. You impregnate women. No, with, no, linen. Linen, I'm sorry. You impregnate linen. Yeah. Don't impregnate the women. With drugs. Yeah. Yeah. To treat wounds. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't so that makes sense. This is this is the original text, and this right here is the translation that we have right now, which is punch it up for people, uh, but a nothing but a linen garment. Yeah. Notice how they turn took it from a bandage and turned it into. A, who did this? Who's a, responsible for this? Crappy translators. People who do not work with the Greek. If you bring up the next is this, one, but is this is this an accident or is this intentional? No, these it's translations intentional stupidity. Are they intentionally leaving this this shit out of the Bible? Because no, it's bad training. Oh, 
Okay. It's just bad training. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Now watch this one. Okay, so that last one had businos on it. Well, what is the businos? It's fine linen bandage, right? They give you at the top. But then look at the reference on the second line. That's Euripides Bacchae. Okay, so this is something that they're using within some kind of religious ritual. And look at number two at the bottom. Roman numeral number two, Porphurus. That's Hesychius. And who's Hesychius? Hesychius is a second lexicographer from the fourth and fifth who comes in. And he has access to these ancient Greek um, lexicography texts, right? So before anybody was having any kind of substantial literature, the Greeks were already at the level, and these are ancient Greeks, they're already at the level of creating um, a language that is so highly specialized, we're still trying to translate it. These translations that you've just pulled up, what does this have to do with, or what does this tell you about the scene of Jesus in the park? That's exactly what this verse says right here. It says, can you zoom in on that a little bit? Yeah, can we? There you go. There you go. You just did it. Yeah, and so he's, um, what happened? So Jesus is there, and it says um, the kid dropped the bandage uh, and ran off. That's what exactly what that says. The okay. kid dropped the bandage and ran off naked. Okay. Yeah. So, and it says specifically in previous, in 51, that it was epigumnos. And epigumnos is on his private parts. An epigumna, which is the bandage that's the, soaked in drugs. The scene done that's on there, right? And why? Why is Jesus with the kid? Remember? When he first walks in the garden, he falls over. He stumbles over and he's, ah, he's in pain. He's going through the exact same symptoms that doctors will describe. Jesus is? Of the drug users. Yeah, it's in this chapter. It's in Mark 14. Yeah. So he's tripping. Um, he's, it says that he's exceptionally fearful, right? So it looks like he's in some kind of psychotic fear mm -hmm. and he's screaming about, take it, don't, you know, don't let me do it. And he's with his kid. He's with this kid at the time, right? And he ends up with stuff on his face, stuff that is like big drops of porphyron. I'm talking about bodily bodily fluids. Blood is blood. how it's typically no, that's how it's translated. It's not the blood that he's got. It's purple. And he's got an antidote from the kid's That's the Galene is the kid's seed. He has to Heracles has to have Hylas. He has to have his boy. Zeus has to have Ganymede. On the Prypaic side they call it Ganymede's and the question is, do you drink from Ganymede's I don't. Well, that's why you're not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, bring me back down to earth here. What's, okay. what, what's going on in the park again? So, so Jesus has um, the purple on his face. Yeah. He's got the purple on his so face. So Jesus, uh, Jesus is is having some sort of a psychotic fit, right? He's having, a, he's having he's some kind of overwhelming emotional state. It's hitting him so hard. He's falling on the ground. So he's got, some kind, he's got something on board that's causing him to stumble. And, and it's 4 a.m. in the morning? It's, yeah, it's 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got, and, and he's, who, who, he just came from the who wrote this, by party the way? with the kids. <laughs> he just came from Did the Did one party. of the cops write this? One of the cops that arrested him? No, this is Mark. You know, Mark was there. Well, no, Mark is telling you the things, that, the secret things that you're not supposed to know. So how does Mark know if he wasn't there? Yeah, well, I don't care if he does or doesn't know. The fact is he's saying them. Okay. And that's what's scary. Well, how do we know Mark didn't have, have an extra grind against Jesus? You, you want to make Jesus look like a like a bad guy and make him look like a weirdo well, or a could. crazy person? He could, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. For all I know. Right. All, that's why I say we have to stick with exactly what the source the is. The point saying. is that this is what, take it for what it's worth. This is what Mark said. Yeah. And, he and Mark was not there. Uh, no. It's Peter, James, and John, and the kid. Okay. 
Yeah. Now, Mark, uh, excuse me, where did Jesus come from before this? Mm -hmm. In the scene, he came from the place where he was with all the kids in the upper room. That's where they came from. Right. In what room? In the upper room. It's just the okay. way to refer to the place. Look, it was shady. Right. This is okay. part of the cops. This is part of what the cops have on him. Right. He sent out a couple of his boys to go scout out a place. And when he did, he told him, hey, you're going to come to this guy. And he's standing there and he's doing this. And you got to approach him and say, Jesus's boys, where do we need a place for Jesus to celebrate? And he says, take him in here. And he finds a guy and they take him up. And they get a shady backroom business. Remember, what, what does Jesus do with his boys? We all know this. That's why we're a crowd and we're angry and we want Jesus crucified. Now you understand why there was a frigging crowd there. Yeah. A little bit brutal with them, weren't they? Well, yeah, they had good reason to be. He was with those 12 underage kids in that room washing feet. And you got to get naked when you wash feet. Have you ever washed somebody's feet naked? Not that I can recall. How about a 12-year-old boy? No, absolutely not. Now, why wouldn't you? Do you have some kind of problem with Jesus? <laughs> Apparently, I do. Yeah, okay. All right. That's too bad, because he ends up in the garden after this with the three older ones, and he says, G keep guard while he takes the young kid off to the middle of the garden. In the meantime, they're falling asleep while Jesus is rolling around in agony and doing what he's got to do to get for the Galene from the boy. Mm -hmm. And that's the mastery here. The boy has some kind of antidote. Mm -hmm. Galen describes pre Yeah, it's not milky. Galen describes this. Yeah, as long with the pre girls uh, uh, exudate from their breast. You can milk. You didn't know you could? I did not know that. Uh, okay, well you can, medically probably has antibodies in it to whatever the venoms they're using because these same girls you cut them and this stuff you cut them and you wrap them with the snake venom and that's why we all hold up the serpent right we all know it you see my tattoo right it doesn't Which say tattoo? it doesn't say it was on a pole it's, show me the tattoo it you're says talking about. it was on a tattoo i'm just any uh, of them. Uh, uh, just any of them. Uh. i'm waxing poetic i'm sorry Okay, so Galen talks about this pre fluids that boys and girls create, and he talks about this being used as an antidote to snake venom specifically. It's the and it's the galene with it's a Greek term that means the calm after the storm. Galene. 